Who was Ambrogio Lorenzetti? To learn about the life of Ambrogio Lorenzetti, we'll have to go back in time to the beginning of the Roman Empire. This started between the 379 AD to 395 AD. The ruler, Theodosius I, died. His empire was divided into two parts. The Western Roman Empire ruled from Rome, and the Eastern Roman Empire ruled from Byzantium. This was later renamed Constantinople. However, today we know it as the city of Istanbul. Due to differences in religion, Rome fell into the cultural base of barbarianism, while Byzantium was turned into the central of imperial authority, producing an exodus of Roman painters and Greek artists who settled in Byzantium, where they created iconic and Christian images, giving the rise to Byzantine arts. For the years for the years 1050 to 1200 AC, the Roman cities became increasingly wealthy due to international trade. There was a gradual increase in tension, and this led to the fall of the Byzantium. Under Roman influence, this caused an exodus back to Roman cities, which allowed the combination of arts to lead to the Byzantine Romanesque art. The Byzantine Romanesque art subsequently led to the pre-Renaissance period. This period is where the artists that we are about to talk about came from and originated. In the figure shown are the name of Italian painters of Trecentos. We have Ducio, Pietro Gavellini, Giotto, Simon Martini, and the brothers Pietro and Ambrogio Lorenzetti. Ambrogio and his contemporaries lived in a time of transition, where precise cut between the simplified and idealistic of Byzantine art was separated with the realistic naturalism of the Gothic. Very little is known of Ambrogio Lorenzetti. However, because of the history of his younger brother, Pietro Lorenzetti, we are able to know that Ambrogio was born in Siena, Italy on 1285 AD and died on June 9, 1348 AD as a victim of the Black Plague. Ambrosio lived in a social context of economic growth where the merchants, financiers, and manufacturers acquired enough economic power that allowed them to order artworks in accordance with their taste and social status. Back to Ambrosio. Very little is known about his personality. Some critics refer him as a gifted artist of impeccable intellectual curiosity, unusual inventiveness, and an unerring sense for detecting the most significant moment of an issue or event. Ambrosio was constantly looking for the past to enrich his own art styles. Throughout his work, Ambrosio showed a wide independence in his art, unlike demonstrated by his contemporaries, of course. Ducio, Giotti, and Gavellini probably followed the teaching of Zimbabwe, while his brother Pietro and Simone chose the art of Ducio. The art of Ambrio is more linked to the Byzantine traditionalism than any of his contemporaries. Like all painters of Trecentos, Ambrosio materialized through his thoughts through the pictorial representation of religious subjects. However, it is shown that he was more influenced by patronage. Ambrosio materialized some political issues as well. Now that we know little about the history of Byzantine art and know some qualities of Ambrosio, then let's state some of his works. The following artworks have been attributed to Ambrosio. Madonna and the Child of Vigo Alabed, St. Louis of Thelos. Madonna was a child of Mary Magdalene and St. Dorothea. Four stories from the life of St. Nicholas, a group of four clairs. 
Madonna and the Child of the Late Saint Michael Madonna and Child with Saint Nicholas and Saint Proculus Maesta Small Maesta Presentation in the Temple Annunciation Now that we know the work of Ambrosio Lorenzetti, what makes it different from his contemporaries? To answer this question, we will compare the work of Ambrosio against the work done by others that reflect the same thing. We will start with the Annunciation because most critics refer to the Annunciation because it reflects the most essential art of Ambrosio. To begin, we must know that the Annunciation compromises the sequence of five parts. The Archangel Arrival and Solution, Received with the Wonder of the Virgin, the Delivery of the Message by Gabriel, the Explanation of how this will be and the Moment of Acceptance by the Virgin, and the Departure of the Archangel. Here, we have the Annunciation made by Ambrosio, and we will compare this with each of the works done by this theme by their contemporaries. We'll start with Ducio. Let's make comparisons. On the right side is the Annunciation by Ducio. Ducio shows the arrival of the Archangel and Mary receives him with a gesture of blessing. This whole lack is limited to the simple delivery of a message and shows nothing on emotional content that this moment should have. Now we'll compare the Annunciation of Simone. We see in the Annunciation of Simone the moment when the Archangel arrives to deliver the message. Mary looks rather shy at this and this is not the expected emotional response at this time. Now let's compare them to the brothers. The Annunciation of Pietro shows once more the simple delivery of the message in an act that lacks almost any emotional expression. None of them, Ducio, Simone, or Pietro, could represent a true moment, the most significant moment, the Annunciation of the theme. All of them were limited to the simple arrival of the Archangel Gabriel to deliver a message. Ambrosio was the only one who cleverly caught the most significant moment of this Bible passage, the Annunciation, the moment of the Incarnation acceptance of Mary. Ambrosio represents this through the elevation of Mary's gaze towards the upward sky. Ambrosio obviously demonstrated his intellectual ability and originality. Presentation in the Temple Year 1342 AD Technique Color on Panel Dimensions 101.2 times 66 inches Location Uffizi Gallery, Florence, Italy The Presentation in the Temple is another religious theme developed by the artists of Trecentos. This presents difficult to be expressed through an art because it is a very complex theme. According to St. Luke, the presentation not only refers to the presentation of the child of the Virgin Mary, but it also includes the purification of the mother and the prophecies of Samoan and Anna. This is very difficult to be represented in patient. Versions of Ducio and Giotto were limited to the action of Samoan delivering the child to the mother's arms. Let's look at this work, the presentation by Ducio. Here we can only observe when the Simon delivers the child of the Virgin Mary. There is nothing that shows Ducio conveying the true meaning of the theme, the presentation. Ducio does not show the purification of Mary and does not represent a minimum on the prophecies of Simone and Anna. Ducio's work is limited to the yes to delivery Christ child to the Virgin Mary.
Now look at this other work of art. It is the presentation by Giotto. Giotto, similar to Ducio, does not speak of any purification. The prophecies is invisible to our senses. The whole narrative of the event is limited to the making of the delivery to Samoan to Mary. Only Ambrosio, in his painting, the presentation was beyond the simple delivery of the child. He chose the deepest moment in relation to the theme. He included the prophecies of Samoan and the salvation through Mary. For mine eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared before all face of light, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. Each figure is mobile, filled with awareness of the sacredness of the moment. Most gestures are the rest. Samoan holding the child, Mary holding shower, hands of the attendants are firmly clasped, and the high priest grasped on a knife and a pigeon is static. Above the central arc place Moses and Malachi holding scrolls with writing that point to the purification of Mary, according to the verse in Leviticus 12, 8. The contractual relationship between God and his chosen people appear in the book in Malachi in chapter 3, verse 1. Below, Anna is holding another scroll with writings about the redemption. Ambrosio represents the theme of representation in a comprehensive matter. The delivery of the child by Samoan, the prophecy of Samoan, the purification of Mary, and the redemption of Israel. But the greatness of Ambrosio was not limited to represent the themes of the presentation with all significance that the issue involves. It was in this work that the presentation in the temple by Ambrosio, where Christ his child's rendering is an example of a real baby under one year old. Ambrosio could get the correct proportion between the head and the body of an infant under one year of age. Unlike his contemporaries, who seemed to portray an older child from one to four years of age. Ambrosio infused the ritual of the presentation with human feeling in the motherly figure of Mary and the swaddled infant sucking his thumb in the unconcerned innocence. Again, Ambrosio shows us that it does differ from any artist of his time, his creativity and his unerring sense to find the most significant portion of a theme. Madonna and the Child of Vigo Leabet Year 1319 AD Technique Tempera on wood Dimensions 148.5 times 78 centimeters Location Museo de Arte Secre San Casquiano in Val de Pesa it is important to note that Madonna and Child of Vico Blavet is the earliest work of Ambrosio Lorenzetti known. Through this work, it is possible to establish that he got it as formation as his painter, not following the teachings of his contemporaries as Ducio, Simone, or his brother Pietro. Nothing of significance of them has been found in this work. The originality of Ambrosio resulted in a very different version of the theme compared to its predecessors. The virgin was placed in a frontal pose and the child is endowed with an enhanced naturalism, painting it as a tiny baby rather than an older child. The pose of the child was modified to a reclining position and the fully charged in the mother's arms but still retaining this tender look at her. Now we compare the Madonna and child by Ambrosio with virgins of his contemporaries. First, with the version made by Ducio. Now compare it to the version of Simone. And then with the version of his brother, Pietro. And finally, with the version of Giotto. Nothing compares to the magic touch that Ambrosio provided in his artwork. Only Ambrosio using one of his most valuable principles, the Byzantine tradition, represents the figure of a Mary in a way that the impression of majesty is enhanced. The frontal pose with a stare in their eyes carrying a very active child emotionally. 
Here, we cannot realize that its objective was to establish a powerful stress between the two figures, two different emotional states. There was the majesty of the mother versus the native activity of the child. Rowley said in his book that the voltage between Ambrosio's figures can be compared to the Chinese principle of yin-yang, according to which equally significant opposites need one another for completeness. Before Ambrosio, this was the true meaning of distress, and this is the contrary to the preferences of his contemporaries. The harmony between Madonna and Child to achieve unity through his courtly elegance, Pietro showed his intem intimate tenderness. Giotto showed an emotional tone of blessing. The Madonna and Child of Vico Alibet is an example of traditionalism. Byzantine art which combines with their creativity to recreate the moment of the deepest significance of a theme. Now we'll move on to the Maestro. Year 1335. Tempera on panel in gold. Dimensions 155 centimeters by 206 centimeters. Maestro by Ambrosio Lorenzetti is only one version of Maestro. Maestra is the Madonna of the Saint's Angel, is a masterpiece of Ducio, versions of the theme Maestra. Observe here the Maestra of the Asul. We note that the large side of the Virgin and her child, Maestra is an expression whose meaning is majesty of the Virgin, and that according to the Byzantine permission that has a dogmatic meaning as Mary of the Mother of God, Queen of Heaven, and Mia Ditrix. In its simplest form, its meaning is Your Majesty to refer to Mary, which denotes a concept and not an event that can easily be narrated to a painting. Let's see how Ambrosio faces this problem. Ducio and Samon, before Ambrosio, had created their own virgin compared to other figures. Now observe the Maesa Samon. The size of a virgin with her child is barely larger than the other figures. Here, we now see Maesta Ambrosio, which seems like a huge figure but it actually has an intermittent size between maestas created by Ducio and Simone. Ducio and Ambrosio both involve majesty and divinity through the monumentality of the Virgin. At the same time, they have the eye of the observer to focus on the Virgin as the main figure. If we compare both maestas and Ducio's and Ambrosio's, Ambrosio's Virgin is smaller than the Virgin of Ducio, but appears to be much larger. Ambrosio's achievement is due to the placement of the throne, Mary, which is on a structure that appears to be three steps of a staircase, each step a different color representing three virtual theologies. By placing the virgin on the structure, it gives the appearance of having a virgin of larger size. With this, the creativity of Ambrosio achieves a purpose, the larger majesty of the virgin, bigger than the virgin du Cio. At the same time, Ambrosio was the first who introduced the representation of theological virtues of the Maestra. But unlike du Cio, Ambrosio also increases the majesty of the Virgin, painting small pyramids that look almost negligible before the majestic size of Mary. Then we compare Maestro's Ambrosio to Simone. It should be noted that if the majesty, according to Byzantine tradition, depends on the monumentally on the figure, a Virgin, Simone draw, has not much majesty as compared to Ambrosio. Contrary to Simone, the Maestros of Pietro and Giotto denote majesty which is comparable to the majesty of Ambrosio and Ducio for its monumental, but show little or no majesty through the ornaments and golden halos. It is also important to emphasize that the Virgin has to be surrounded by saints and angels. Pietro and Giotti represented little of them, that is, saints and angels, or attendants, but Ducio and Ambrosio used many saints and attendants, with the difference that Ambrosio placed them in the pictorial field by the hierarchy, contrary to Ducio, which he did disorderly. A novelty in the subject Maestra, which is due to the creative minds of Ambrosio, was an introduction of three theological virtues of the presence of very active angels who make music, throw flowers, and folding and sensing. In a summarized way, the Maestra has many, many, many reasons. First, the proportion of the head in relation to the body is much larger than in the paintings of his contemporaries or perhaps any other artist or previous successor. Second, the head of the Virgin is 
designed on a spherical area. Ambrosio's use as an area means of pictorial meaning gave them a three-dimensional appearance to color management. It is noted in some of his works Ambrosio uses perspective, but it was not his discovery, because the Klimbu probably used some of his works ideas long before. And Ambrosio mastered the endowment of his ability to convert the pictorial field and architectural structures of limited size and illusionment massive structures on our senses. Thank <laughs> you.